Hi, I'm Susan Fudge, Cumulane co-founder and president, and in this video I want to personally share with you some tips of things that we have learned along the way that has helped us decide which patterns and papers to layer with one another. Now these tips are useful for whether you're making a scrapbook layout, a card, or a DIY project. They're just a couple of tips and things that to keep in mind to hopefully help speed up and simplify when you go to actually layer the patterns and colors together. Now we actually categorize this into three different categories. We um, use our main patterns, which is category one, supporting patterns, and then what we refer to as blenders or two tones. And so to help us take a close look at this, I just pulled some paper from my paper stash um, just to kind of show samples of each of those categories. Now starting with a main pattern. Now a main pattern is usually one that is so cute. <laughs> you just cannot resist it. It just catches your eye and you feel like you have to have three of that design because you just love it so much. So a main pattern is often the one that really stands out to you. It is usually busier or more themey, so it has more of a theme to it. So for example, looking at this stash that we have here, um, for this one, for example, see how it's a lot busier. It has um, a lot of colors included in the palette and it does have a more girly thing because of the flowers. So there is more of a feel going on here. Um, and then we also have some hot air balloons. This would be also a main pattern. And the main pattern is a personal style preference and depends on what project that you're working on. So that could be a really cute main pattern. And we have cactuses. That definitely sets a theme for your your project that you're working on. So all of those would be great main patterns. So you can see here, right? And you even have one that has a bicycle. So you would just start by deciding which of those main patterns um, are of interest to you. Which one are you just love the most, you're drawn to? Personally, I'm gonna go with um, the flower here, the one that we picked up first. Okay, now as far as a supporting pattern, um, basically, the whole purpose of that is to support your main pattern. So, for example, um, if you really wanted a bike theme, you can absolutely do more of that bike theme. But see, because of the um, busyness of this one and the busyness of that one, it could actually be more competing with one another. So you're looking for something that supports it. And often these supporting patterns are more general patterns like stripes, polka dots, um, chevrons, things like that that are very universal and they don't really have a theme, they're just really fun patterns. So for example, this more of this plaid, like see how that instantly supports your main pattern. So again, we're looking for one of each. This is also great to have that supporting pattern there as well, okay? And then there's this one. Oh, that's really cute, super cute. Okay, so I personally really like that. Now I'm gonna share a personal opinion of mine. When you have a supporting pattern that you love, but you flip it over and it has a pattern that you're not so fond of or don't have a use for, then that's gonna limit the effectiveness of what you can use that paper. So I really try to take in consideration the double sides. So what's on the back, what's on the front, and can I use it in other ways? Um, if this had been maybe um, a blender, so for example, like this pattern on the back, then I would have absolutely got both use out of this pattern. So, um, that's something to keep in mind. And we'll go over blenders here in a minute since I kind of jumped the gun on that. So I love this and you can absolutely choose to do that, but just note that if you don't have a need for this, then you're gonna be limited there. Now going back to this plaid pattern, it still supports my main pattern. And when I flip it over, I have a great um, two-tone pattern that will be super helpful with layering, okay? So personally, I'm looking for a main pattern and a supporting pattern. Um, and then let's go ahead and talk about what I mean when I say two tones or blenders, okay? 
Two tones are patterns that basically include two colors. They are usually um, not as bold or busy, um, but they help really a lot with breaking um, the busyness up or separating two patterns, specifically your main patterns and your supporting patterns on your design and with embellishing or accessories on your layers. So to give you an example of a two-tone, actually here, this is a good example of a two-tone. It's two colors, right? It's yellow and white layered on top of each other. So that's, that personally is a two-tone. Um, we even have this one. This is really cute as well. It's the black with the cream um, together. So those are two tones. Now you can choose two tones or blenders and blenders are where you have basically the same color but two different shades. So for example, this is um, pink with light, a light pink shade on top of it. And so these are more of your blender patterns. So really quickly, I wanna show you, so going back where we just have these showing here at the front, see how all of these, because we have some blenders and two tones and we have a main pattern supporting, it feels very cohesive. So right there, it's gonna simplify when you go to design and you can see that by having a mixture of those three categories that we talked about is going to help um, with layering and choosing which patterns to layer with. It's gonna help make that decision better. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw in, let's say if we had um, two supportings and two mains, um, it really limits what's standing out here and what's shining. So hopefully you guys can see that difference in those, in having that variety. So see how that just feels a lot more complimentary and blender um, and supporting of one another. And this one just feels a lot busier and almost confusing in some ways on where the focus should go. Now, super helpful that when we change, when we turn these ones over, we have some patterns that we'll be able to pull on as well. And then these ones, unfortunately, are main patterns again. So just things to keep in mind, but that's okay because I know I can make a really cute uh, design with this. Now, I do want to show you a couple samples of different scrapbook layouts that I've created. And um, now that we've talked about these different tips of things to look for in your paper, and then um, that will allow you when you're looking at our layouts to see how those apply in the things that we design. And of course in cards and things like that as well. Now I also want to note that these are just some tips. Um, of course, allow your creativity to flow, your personal style to flow. If you personally like to pull in cardstock, then from pulling cardstock, I personally prefer more blenders just to have that texture and depth to my designs. But if you don't have blenders or two tones and you have a lot of main patterns, then pull in some coordinating cardstock to help soften and to um, allow those main patterns to shine in your design. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull out some samples and point out main patterns versus supporting patterns and blenders and two tones, okay? So looking at this sample here that you see, um, this border, this scallop that we cut out here, this would be considered more of the main pattern. And then you have a supporting pattern here and then of course you have the blenders and the two tones really building up off of those and showing the contrast on your page. So of course you really never know what you're gonna design with them, but by having that combination of blenders and main patterns and two tones, it allows you to know that you'll be able to layer easy without the frustration of the paper, okay? Same thing here, you have a main pattern and a supporting pattern and then of course some blenders in there to help with accessory layers. So it just depends on how many layers you're doing, but if you have that mixture, then it's really nice. Um, here's a hot air balloon, which would be at that point a main pattern, and then you have some supporting patterns. Actually, there's two supporting patterns here, um, which is okay as well. Just depends on what double-sided paper you're using. And then you also have a variety of blenders um, to add some different layers. Now, if you are a scrapbooker, we have a great video that walks through how to pick what paper for a two-page layout. 
and we personally recommend five to six sheets of paper and so just click on the link below and it will walk you through how to put together your own personal paper kits for that specifically. Now also here are some card samples, right? And you can see here on this card we have our main pattern, we have some supporting patterns and then some blenders in the mix there. And then also this card which has um, a pattern here. And so just depending on your design, you might not always have a supporting with a main and we have some blenders. And then of course on our card base, those are more blenders to allow those main patterns to pop off of the card. And then another example is that you have your main patterns and then you have some blenders in there as well. So not necessarily always having a supporting with a main on such a small canvas like a card, but again, the thought process is that if you're specifically looking to buy paper, then buy the combination of supporting and main, not just like all main patterns, because if you have all main patterns, it's gonna make your job a lot harder, <laughs> a lot harder than it needs to be anyhow. Now, of course, like I said, these are just a couple rules. So like looking at this card specifically, we have our two tones, right? Cause this is a blue and white stripe here. Um, but then our main pattern is this flower, which in this case, it was just scraps of paper that I had. So um, really it's the combination. It's the combination, again, of the main pattern, supporting pattern and blenders that is gonna allow you to make those decisions and know that it's gonna be cohesive just for whatever choices that you decide to layer when you actually get to designing. Well, I hope these tips have been helpful on different things to keep in mind when you're looking at your paper and trying to decide which ones to layer with what or what to buy and so that you kind of have more of a purpose on what you're buying as well. And um, I'm personally gonna try to make a sample using the paper stash that I just showed you. It's a good reason to use the paper up. And I'll try to do a variety of a layout, um, maybe a one pager, a card and a project. So just depending on personally what you're using, you can see those pieces that we just select as far as our main pattern, supporting patterns and those blenders in actual use. And then if you are personally interested in making some kits yourself using these rules that I just shared with you, then click on the links below. Thanks for watching.